Do the Eagles coming off a big loss to the Niners make you feel like it's more likely they upset the Cowboys? No, I don't. I, I think we're going to learn a lot about Philadelphia. They had all those yep. close games that they found out how to win. You know, that's a character kind of issue in a good way. So you want to you know, applaud them for that and give them their flowers for that. But that's a depressed locker room right there. That's A.J. Brown's one of the biggest trash talkers in the sport today and is always happy to, you know, gab in front of the cameras. And that seems like a defeated dude. Now, he happens to be right. Life doesn't always go your way, philosopher. Football doesn't always go your way. No one's going to be 17-0 and 0 this year. Uh, but you got to pull up your big boy pants and get back to work. But that's a different guy. Because every other game, other than maybe the Jet yeah. game when they lost a month and a half ago, you know, it's a lot of cockiness and arrogance. And, you know, we hear everybody complaining and bitching and moaning. And all of a sudden, that's a, that's a subdued yeah. eagle locker room. And let's be honest, America, <laughs> we love it. We love a subdued <laughs> eagle locker room because it means they're tasting it right yeah. now. Now, they could put it all to rest. Go to Dallas, beat the Cowboys. You're guaranteed to now win the division. You're still in the hunt, of course, for the number one seed, depending on what San Francisco does over the last five weeks. But if you lose to the Dallas Cowboys, now you're inviting negativity and criticism into the entire locker room, the coaching staff. So I do think it's a must-win game for the Cowboys if they still have dreams of winning the division and staying alive for, uh, which is really a long shot, to be the number one seed. If you're Philly, you want to get right back on the horse and win. If you do, all is well. Ain't nothing wrong with being 15-2. and two. Yeah, yeah. If you lose, though, you're now looking at the prospects of you've given up home field advantage because San Francisco, of course, has the tiebreaker against you. Yeah, and, you're right. Right. and A.J. Brown's right. Like, There's no time to sulk and kind of feel sorry for yourself. The Niners came in that building looking for his validation solely because Brock Purdy didn't finish the NFC Championship game. And he stepped in that building and they dominated. You yeah. talk about they weren't able to come back from behind. They had six straight possessions where they were able to score. You talking about going in the red zone, coming out with three twice. And what was crazy about that game overall, A.J. Brown realized like they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough in the tank to beat the best team in football. And by the way, you're going to see them again if you plan to be where you need to be. Yep. So I think a lot was answered. Now you got to go to Dallas. You know Dallas sitting back like barbecue chicken, baby. Bring them birds home. And they're, gonna, they're hot. They're the hottest team in football. Yeah, I also still question. I'm not sure if anyone in Philly is. I don't work there anymore. But I, I question the mentality and the thought process of having Jalen Hurts playing late in that fourth quarter. Yeah. I'm not saying he got hurt any more than he was hurt. But having gone to the tunnel, maybe a concussion, which obviously he passed protocol. Yep. Maybe the left knee again, which he already has a brace on. Got beat up pretty good. I'm still trying to figure out why they valued that fourth quarter as much as they did. They got nothing to prove to anybody. They went to a Super Bowl last a year. Thing. They got the best record in the NFC. And yet I'm sitting there at home going, I can't believe this dude is in the game. I don't think it helps him one bit for the game against Dallas. And again, it's more of a must win for the Cowboys. But if Philadelphia loses this game, San Francisco owns the it's, one seed. It's when you watch the Dallas Cowboys go to Philly and lose in the way that they lost. Yeah. You still come away from that feeling like, all right, good matchup. Dak played really played well. well yep. You feel a little yeah. bit of confidence in yeah. the Cowboys even in a loss. But if you're the Eagles losing this game, doubt starts to seep in. Like yeah, they I mean, got their already butts kicked. I'll tell you why because that because then what we're all going to do is we're going to go back, right? And we're going to say, damn, they almost lost to the Bills. Man, they almost lost to this team. They almost lost to the Patriots. And, well, you're going to look at a four-game stretch there where a play or two was the difference between them them in the middle right now of a three-game losing streak, maybe a four-game losing streak, and them being the best team in football. Like the Eagles, it comes down, no joke, like the Dolphin game. Washington, they won. I'm not worried about that game. Yeah. But the Washington game, the Kansas City game, the Buffalo game, you could make the argument that they played poorly enough to lose four out of the last five. Sure. Yeah. So now you go to Dallas, of course. Dallas has revenge. Dallas is playing their best football. If the Cowboys win, Eagles are still a really good team, and they're playing playoff football. So no reason to get that twisted. But you could start asking questions, right? We haven't seen this team lose back-to-back -back games. No, haven't we'll, seen it. We will be. You don't want to see it this time of year, right? Especially when everybody's riding high, especially like the Cowboys. Who's right? more obnoxious, 
Eagle fans when they're winning or Cowboy fans Cowboys when they're winning? It's not even close. I don't know. It's not even close. Eagle not fans, close. if you if you uh, if you're a fan of social media and you sit on the toilet and you scroll down, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Eagle fans prior to that Niner game who were pretty much talking yeah. about Rocky, talking about the history of Philly. I mean, it was Philly, Philly, Philly. How much time so, you spent on the toilet? I mean, a lot. Moving on to second down. All right. Have the Packers solidified their franchise quarterback moving forward? I, look, I think it's probably premature to say that grand scale, but they've got a quarterback for sure. He's their quarterback. And uh, he deserves it. He's played really good football the last couple of weeks. And it looks like the light bulb's gone off. They're a very young team. I think the youngest team on offense yep, in the yep. entire NFL, which is also a valuable lesson for those of you that are fans of teams that are struggling but recognize you have a lot of first-year, second-year, third-year talent. Sometimes it sucks to be patient, but you got to be patient. And I think that's paying off right now. For the Green Bay Packers, very, very young team, young wide receivers, young, inexperienced quarterback, and all of a sudden it seems like he has started to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Guys are getting open. He's making the right reads, and the Green Bay Packers, for good reason right now, are very much alive for a playoff spot, which a month ago, let's be honest, they were dead and buried. So oh, yeah. you want to give them a lot of credit. I don't want to give LaFleur a lot of credit for not losing faith, for being very consistent. And, of course, Jordan Love's play has gotten them amazingly into the final wild card spot. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line, you talk about the last couple of weeks, he's out dueled Patrick Mahomes, out dueled Jared Goff. He's leading his offense down the field. And I think that I said this yesterday. I think I'm just I'm impressed with how he starts the game, right? You're talking about he's not afraid to pull the trigger. He's throwing the ball deep. He's connected with Watkins. He's connected with a lot of those young receivers like Romeo Dobbs and company, Jaden Reed. So I think when you talk about what he's doing, really, he's playing with confidence, right? Yeah, I hate He's it. playing with a guy who has a lot of confidence, who's not afraid to just flat out sling the football all over the field. It looks good. I hate it. I hate it. Why? I hate it. Uh, well, why? Why do I hate it? Why? Because it's just another franchise that has a quarterback. Oh, God. <laughs> like, I, I, I got a quarterback allegedly saying, I don't want to play, which is not true. He <laughs> wants to play. And here's the guy that wants to play, and we don't know if we want him to play. Me all Green Bay's got another a good quarterback. It, I am so angry about it. <laughs> no, like it, I hate it. Every team out there in America that has a legitimate starting the, quarterback, screw you. Who's the last Jets quarterback that was better than Jordan Love right now? Joe Namath. <laughs> and, and by the way, <laughs> and just to show you how bad it is for us as Jet fans, Joe Namath, Hall of Famer, 69 Super Bowl. More interceptions Man. than touchdowns. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not that good. I <laughs> mean, on. that's a real fact, though. Like, yeah, that's, that's a real fact. Real. Yeah. Who yeah. got a third do down? The whole because he was good on the Jets. Yeah. Third and football. Does the loss of Dell put a ceiling on the surprising season for the I, I can't say it puts a ceiling on it, uh, but it certainly hurts because he's a security blanket for Stroud. Obviously, Stroud yeah. encouraged the Texans to draft him. He was his workout buddy, you know, in the offseason. It was a great story, and you feel terrible for Tank Dell, who is a no-name guy, obviously, coming in this year. And, uh, you know, it's top 15, third-round pick, and he's having a great season, right? Uh, so you feel terrible for him. But I'm not sure if it changes everything dramatically for the Houston Texans because we all believe in the ability of C.J. Stratt. Facts. So next man up, hopefully that guy knows the routes and knows how to get open, and it doesn't change how good Stratt is. But crazy. So, yes, does it hurt to lose a good player? Obviously it does. It doesn't change the prospect, I don't think, of them getting in. Yeah, I mean, I respect the, the, the emotions, I guess. I mean, you know, Tank Dell has a hell of a story. Went to Houston. He's a hometown kid playing yeah. for the Texans. I get all that. But, hey, if I'm Nico Collins, what about me? Right? Yeah. I, I've been balling for you. Don't forget about me, homie. What about Damian Pierce, the running back? Ball. You're talking about Robert Woods, who's a hell of a receiver. So he still has weapons. Like, Tank Dell is good. He's a young, yeah. good young talent. But the season's not over. Like, if I'm that receiver, I'm not going to CJ Stroud do it. Like, hey. You're, you're good, homie. Like, we're, right. we're out here running I'll around. Too. Well, I'll get open, yeah. too. So, relax. Yeah. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So, check them out, too.